Hello, welcome to Knitting Pipeline. This is a Knitting Pipeline Extra, and I think I'm going to be doing this in bits and pieces. There are a few things here that are going to be sent off today, so I just wanted to talk to you about those and a few other things that I forgot in the last episode. I am Prairie Piper on Ravelry, and on Instagram and YouTube, I'm Knitting Pipeline. Let's see, the blog is knittingpipeline.com. I put a lot of show notes underneath on YouTube, and then in the blog, they're also there. Okay, so knitting. <laughs> I have a finished pair of socks. These are the Zigzagular Socks by Susie White of the Prairie Girls Knit and Spin podcast. She's Prairie Girl Susie on Ravelry. So, oops, I have the wrong one to show you there. Here, there you can see the pattern on the zigzagular socks. It goes down the side on both of them. I just, I had plenty of yarn to make the toe in the same color, but I just decided to use some of the diabolical from my own socks that I showed you the last time. And this, these are for my husband. They're a size men's, or 12 men's. Let's see. I probably... I don't know if I made any changes on it or not, but I love this pattern. This is the third pair of socks I've made in the zigzagular pattern, and it just really is fun. This is just enough to keep you busy. It's not too difficult. You can memorize it, and then you just always kind of want to get to the next pattern repeat for me. So there they are. Now he can wear them. They have been washed, and there you can see it there too. It's a good way to use variegated, I think, or this is this is almost a tonal. Oh, I forgot the, the yarn is Leading Men Fiber Arts in the Turkey Run colorway. Turkey Run is a state park in Indiana, so I imagine that's what it's named after. Then I finished the Rodeo Drive Poncho by Stacy Perry, and this is for another Stacy, my daughter-in-law. And let's see. I can stand up. Whoops, I hit the chair, but okay, there it is. This has a cable down the front, and I did it in Quince and Company Phoebe, which is a tonal. So you can see little striations in the yarn. I'll put it on. Why not? There are two versions on this. There's a wide neck and a higher neck, and I did the wide neck just for ease of getting it on and off, and then, oh, there it is. Rodeo Drive Poncho. I used three and a half skeins, 100 gram skeins of the Phoebe, which is a DK weight. This also has shoulder shaping, much like a raglan sweater, top down, so it does stay on nicely. There is enough shaping that it, it really is a great one. I've made this before for myself. My daughter-in-law saw it and really wanted one. And I didn't care for the yarn I made my first one or mine with. So this was is great. And I have enough sweaters made out of Phoebe that I know it'll wear really well. I made the cabled hat and mitten set by Paulina Chen. I haven't talked about this on the show yet, but it's going to get sent off today for my great nephew. And yeah, I love this pattern. I've never done it before. It is a cable rib. It's super stretchy. He has a large head. He's five months old and his head is 17 and a half inches. So that's pretty good size for a baby. So there's the hat, and then here are the mittens with a little cable. The only modification I made is the same one that I got the idea from Missy and Angie. They This had a repeat every eighth row on the cable, and for a little tighter cable, I did a six row twist or cabling. I don't use a cable needle for this kind of thing, and I do have a tutorial here on YouTube to show how to do that. You kind of have to really understand it because <laughs> cables vary so much that it's a good it's a good thing to learn how to just look at the cable and figure out how you're going to do it. So that's Cabled Hat and Mitten Set by Paulina Chin. And then I put a little wool label on this one with his initials. 
with blanket stitch around it. I did a tutorial when I was making this, but I have no idea. I haven't looked at it. I don't have any idea whether it's any good or not. I don't have a good way to do that kind of close-up work, but I thought the parents would really like that. So it has his initials, and I did the fold-over kind and just blanket stitch around it. I think it'll fit him. I've stretched it out and it easily stretches out to the 17 inches. I think the depth is good. I asked her to measure from the crown of his head down. It looks like it'll fit for that. So that will go off in the mail today. Another thing you could do on the mittens, I didn't want to put a big label, but I think I might do a little duplicate stitch with his initials on the back of the, well, actually like the inside, the front of the mitten. Yeah, I get, I'd call the back the back of the hand, but I don't know. Okay, now another knitting tip, and this one is maybe not the best example, but sometimes you find fancy fruit in these little um, plastic collars to keep them, I guess, good. This is from an Asian pair. If you've never tried an Asian pair, splurge and get one. They are so, so good. But this also makes a really good yarn cake holder. So you're ball doesn't come undone. I've been using them and it kind of makes me feel a little better about having that extra packaging on the, on the Asian pair. I usually only buy one occasionally, but uh, they have this kind of stretchiness and you can just slip it over. I should have brought the one. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's here. Let me see here. Nope. Maybe I don't have it in these bags. Well, that leads me to whips. I don't generally show my whips, but since I had them handy, I thought I would. These are the Galliano Socks by Tracy Miller. I'm using Leading Men Fiber Arts in the Great Sweater Debate colorway. And this has a very cool cable and then a little bit of lace. I asked my husband to pick the yarn. I had two different yarns out. One was pretty well, it was a uh, green tonal, and then this one, and this is the one he picked, which kind of surprised me, but I'm enjoying that. I have both socks to the heel. This one, I just have the heel turn, maybe a few rows, and then the heel turn, and then the other sock is not in here. <laughs> That's okay. The other sock is past the heel turn, and I've picked up the stitches, and then I'm doing the heel in the Mount Richen studio from my Galliano socks. So Galliano to Galliano is how I'm doing that. And I really enjoy this pattern. This is my second pair and I'm sure I'll be doing more. The Galliano socks by Tracy Miller. I also started a Rayors cowl. I just, it's just called Rayors by Quince and Company. It, the designer is Amy Miller. Let me check that for certain. Yes, Amy Miller. The original pattern calls for Finch, Qu Quince and Company Finch, which is a fingering weight. But I uh, decided to use Chickadee, which is a sport weight. And you just stripe. It's in the round. This is going to be my travel project for the holidays and for family sitting and knitting. I've made two of these both for my daughter-in-laws, because when you make one, you have enough yarn left over to make another one. So my colors are slightly different. So far I have Petal, which is the light when it's a like a blush pink, and then Kunlian's Gull, which is the medium gray. Last night I just went into Glacier. So those are the three that I have, and I have the others set aside too. There's going to be Frost, which is a very light neutral gray. Then Rosa Rugosa probably will be in there. Stream, which is a really pretty blue, and one or two others. I can't remember. So I don't, that's going to be a longer term project. It's just really good to have a project like that that you can pick up and take on the go. This is my bag from Jan Smiley. I love this bag. Okay, that is knitting. Let's move on to a little bit of wool applique. And then one quilting project because I forgot it last time and it has to be sent off for a Christmas gift. At the main retreat, we did a mug, rug, and cozy, or mug, 
mug rug and mug swap. And this was not one of my swaps. This was a gift. I saw someone had done this wool embroidery, Julie, she's inky double, she's inky 077 on Ravelry. And she had made for her mug swap, she had done this, which is a wool square and then consent the what they call wool penny is the smaller one and then she did the circles and it's just done with blanket stitch around. I actually have this on my quilting table and I put my drink on there, whatever I have down there, usually water. So what I wanted to show is how this would be a good way to start out with wool embroidery to practice blanket stitch and you wouldn't even need a pattern. You could just cut out a square and some circles in wool and practice doing that. And I love it, Julie. Thank you so much. I don't know if you watched this, watch the video, but I really enjoy using that. And if, if I'm teaching someone, I'm not going to teach classes in wool embroidery or anything like that, but I'm thinking of my granddaughters when they're old enough, that would be a really good first project for someone to get the hang of it. After the last episode, Janelle asked, as I mentioned, some of the embroidery books that I might use. And she said, which ones do you recommend? I have several embroidery books, but I would say the, one I, the ones I use the most are actually these little pocket guides. This one is Pocket Guide Embroidery. My shop in Morton, the quilt corner carries this and I've seen them in many quilt shops. I'm trying to see who the publisher is. Pocket Guide. They're about seven bucks, I think. Four ninety-five. This one says, but I think maybe I've had this for a couple of years. Leisure Arts is the publisher. That's the inside of it, so you can see the instructions are nice and large. But I found it kind of depends on the way your brain's working that day. What works for you? This one is the same series, Leisure Arts Pocket Guide Crazy Quilt Stitches. This is one that on the last, when I showed my maker's quilt and I showed I had done a feather stitch or fern leaf. It, the one I did was actually <laughs> the fly stitch, but that's in here. And then the one I probably use the most is this little one, Hand Embroidery Stitches at a Glance, Carry Along Reference Guide by Janice Vane, V-A-I-N-E. For some reason, the instructions in this really speak to me. And I usually, if I don't quite get it from another source, or I just look at this one first. And partly, I think it's because there are, verb, or there are written instructions as well as the diagrams. These other ones just have the diagrams. They don't tell you anything in words. So I really use this one a lot. And actually, I would say between these three, you probably wouldn't need a whole lot else. And of course, there's always YouTube, the internet. Okay, so the next thing is a quilt I totally forgot to show you last time. I believe in the, the episode 23, I showed you just the top of it. And then I sent it off to Nancy, who is Grace and Peace Quilting. She did a beautiful job on the quilting, and then I got it home, and I sewed the binding on, I believe. I think because I forgot to include it. <laughs> but I don't mind doing that. Okay. And this is a Christmas gift, so I, I'm going to send it off. It is, I think it's called Double the Fun. It is Missouri Star Quilt Company tutorial. Pretty big. I can't remember the measurements. The fabric is Tim Holtz Eclectic Elements, which I think is a lot of fun. There's oh, like blueprints, maps. What's that? Um, well, the music. This looks like passport type stuff. Stamps. It's just. It's really interesting, and I'm pretty sure my son will love this. I don't know if you can see the quilting pattern on it, but you know, I'm going to take a chance and stick it up there. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. 
the backing, I did have to piece it a little bit and Nancy was able to work with it. So it has this matte fabric. And then I took remnants and made a panel down the middle for it, which stretched it out to the point that she could manage it. I think he will really love this. The batting is a very thin batting. I believe it's Quilter's Dream 8020 on that. And all I have to do is make a label for it. That will not be a wool label. That will be a fabric label to have the year and that it's from me to my son. And yeah, so that is uh, my latest big quilt project that was finished and I forgot to show last time and in its finished state. It's kind of nice to finish it and then have a little time to enjoy looking at it before you have to send it off because at first I just wanted to look at it and enjoy it and now I feel like I've done that enough and I can send it off to him. So that's all for this segment. Honestly, I don't know if there will be any more to it, but I might just put this up the way it is. I know it's very short, but realistically, I don't think I'm going to be doing that much between now and when the holidays are actually here. So if this is the end of it, then I will thank you and say that I hope to see you in 2019. My contact information will be at the end of the show, Prairie Piper on Ravelry, Knitting Pipeline on Instagram and YouTube. Thank you so much for watching.